These are the lecture notes for chapter 33. Chapter 33 is on the animal body plan, basic form and function. Uh, some of this is going to be, some of this chapter is going to be um, review from uh, chapter 27. Uh, but there's, there's a little bit of new material, so it shouldn't take very long to go through this chapter. Um, the three key aspects of animal body plans that we're going to discuss are symmetry and body plans, which we uh, covered in another chapter, in chapter 27. Also, bioenergetics and thermoregulation, or regulation of body temperature, and then the types of tissues that are found in um, animals. So, a little bit of information about symmetry. We already learned um, that there are two types of symmetry. There's radial symmetry and there's bilateral symmetry. Um, sponges are the animals that are as uh, asymmetric, so they're called um, parazoa, and other animals have some type of symmetry, so they're called metazoa or eumetazoa. So that means um, that um, parazoa means they have no tissues and metazoa means that they have tissues. Um, but when they lack tissues, they also lack symmetry. So sponges lack symmetry. They are asymmetrical. And all other animals are either radially symmetrical or bilateral, uh, have bilateral symmetry. In um, radial symmetry, you're going to see something like a sea anemone or a jellyfish where you could cut the animal into two equal halves in several different directions, as you see here in the center. Um, bilateral symmetry is typically animals that have um, two eyes, um, you know, and uh, two or four legs or six legs, you know, um, even number of legs, pairs of legs, in other words, um, two ears. And there's only one way that you could cut the animal in half and have two equal halves. So the only animals that we learned with radial symmetry were the cnidarians, which are your jellyfish and your sea anemones and corals, um, and the um, tenophora, which were the comb jellies, and the other animals are bilateral. Um, when organisms are small and they're unicellular, they get their nutrients through diffusion. So, for example, bacteria and protozoans, which are unicellular, um, that's, that's how they get their nutrients is through diffusion. Uh, oxygen just diffuses into their um, body, which is only one cell, um, just diffuses straight through the plasma membrane. Um, the cell size is small because of the surface area to volume ratio. The surface area to volume ratio needs to be large. So um, as the cell gets larger, that surface area to volume ratio decreases. Um, basically, you want a large surface area compared to the volume inside because the surface area is the amount of space that um, is available for nutrients to be absorbed. So um, larger or organisms are multicellular, and in that case, they must um, get their nutrients and oxygen with either special cells or organs and organ systems, like our digestive system and our respiratory system. Um, so. Parazoa are the animals that lack tissues, and metazoa are the animals that have tissues. So again, the sponges are the parazoa, and the other animals are the metazoa. 
All right, so um, there's a little section in this chapter on bioenergetics. Energy from nutrients is used in the animal body to fuel anabolic reactions. Um, BMR or basal metabolic rate is the average amount of energy used by an organism in a non-active state. So typically in humans, um, we describe that amount of energy in calories. Um, and it's around somewhere around for average adults. It depends on, of course, body size and how active you are. But it's somewhere around 2,000 calories per day. Um, more calories per day if, um, if you are active and less if you're not. Excess energy is given off as heat. So um, energy that we obtain from nutrients that we eat. Um, that energy is converted to ATP, and then the energy that um, is not used is given off as heat. I think um, we learned that cellular, cellular respiration is around 39% energy efficient, cellular respiration. So when our cells take glucose and oxygen and break that glucose down, into carbon dioxide and water. That's the process where ATP is produced. So glucose plus oxygen um, forms carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. So 39% of the energy tied up in the, the bonds, the chemical bonds in the glucose, is converted to ATP and used by the body. And then 61% um, would be given off into the environment as heat. Um, on this slide, it's comparing the mass um, in grams of a uh, mouse to an elephant. So the mouse ha is uh, 35 grams and the elephant is 4,500,000 grams. Um, the metabolic rate of the mouse is much, much less than the me metabolic rate um, in the elephant. I'm sorry, gosh, I said that completely wrong. Um, the metabolic rate in the mouse is higher than the metabolic rate in the elephant. Um, smaller organisms that are endothermic, meaning that um, like humans, they're able to maintain a constant internal temperature, no matter what the um, temperature of the environment is. Smaller endothermic organisms have, or what we call warm-blooded, have a higher metabolic rate than larger ones. And active animals also have a higher metabolic rate. All right, um, when we divide up um, the body into halves, a sagittal plane is a section cut through the body that divides it into left and right portions in a, bilateral, uh, a bilaterally symmetrical organism. A sagittal plane would divide that organism into symmetrical um, halves. If it's a mid-sagittal plane, it goes directly through the um, axis, directly through the middle. So a mid-sagittal plane in a human would go directly through, like through the nose and the chin. Um, a frontal plane, which is also called a coronal plane, will separate the organism into um, front and back. And a transverse plane will separate the animal into upper and lower portions. So there is one question, there is one question that you kind of have to look at whether or not the animal is on um, uh, four legs, if it's a four-legged animal or if it um, stands erect on two legs like humans. Um, if 
you divide a goat in um, with a frontal plane, you're going to be dividing it into the top half is called the dorsal half because that's where its back is, and the lower half is called the ventral half because that is where its stomach is. But our um, dorsal is our front, and our, um, I mean, sorry, I said that wrong. Our dorsal is our backside, and our ventral is our front side. So when you do a frontal plane in a human, it's a vertical plane. And if you do a frontal plane in a goat, then it is a um, horizontal plane. So the frontal plane is the yellow one. Um, mid sagittal is the same in a human and a goat, and the transverse plane is different. A transverse plane in a goat divides it into uh, front and back portions, and in a human, it divides it into upper and lower half. All right, um, then there's a section on tissues. There are four main types of animal tissues in the animals that do have tissues. The epithelial tissue is um, linings and coverings. So it's used to line cavities, to line open spaces, to line surfaces. So examples would be the lining um, inside and outside of the intestines or the blood vessels, um, the lining inside and outside of organs like your heart. Your skin is epithelial tissue. Something that's not mentioned here is that um, Epithelial tissue is also used to form glands. So your sweat glands and your oil glands, mammary glands, these are epithelial tissue as well. Connective tissue is the second type. And connective tissue connects tissues. It also provides support. Connective tissue ranges from a liquid such as blood to um, loose tissue such as fat tissue, which we call adipose tissue, and harder tissue such as bone and cartilage. So there's a large variety of connective tissues. Um, muscle tissue, the um, function, general function of any muscle tissue is, con is to contract or generate movement. And neurons are nervous tissue, and the function of any neuron or, or nerve is to conduct. So muscles are for contraction, and neurons are for conducting electrical signals. Um, these are some images, uh, some illustrations of epithelial tissue. Squamous cells, squamous epithelial cells are flat. Simple means that there is a single layer of flat cells. So the thinnest, most delicate tissue in the body is simple squamous epithelial tissue. Um, it forms the lining of um, the air sacs in the lungs called alveoli. And it forms your blood capillaries, which are um, only one cell layer thick. So alveoli and capillaries are, are very, very thin and um, composed of delicate, thin tissue because what's happening across that tissue is diffusion. So uh, simple squamous tissue is um, the purpose of it is for diffusion usually. It's um, to allow diffusion of oxygen, carbon dioxide, um, and so forth. Stratified squamous would be layers of flat tissue. So simple means a single layer, stratified means multiple layers. So the skin is a good example of where we would find stratified squamous epithelial tissue in the body. And then um, this is an image of the tubules in the kidney called nephrons, the kidney tubules. There are millions of kidney tubules, and each tubule forms a little bit of 